like, girl, your shoe. <laughs> Them legs were up in the air. Oh, and she wasn't, she was with it. Who is she? <laughs> like, Tia 2.0. He just came out of nowhere. I think he swung in from the left <laughs> or was it the right? Oh my gosh. What's up guys? It's a girl river and I'm back again with another video. Now listen, okay, we've been talking about this whole Tia Maori divorce saga ever since a couple years ago when she decided that she, you know, graduated from her marriage and decided that she was gonna divorce her husband. Marriage was a success. Yeah. I look at it as like a curriculum when you're in college or high school, right? You're learning, you're growing, you're evolving, you're creating. And I was able to create with Corey some beautiful, amazing children. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that curriculum and at the end, there's a graduation. But, you know, recently I had been covering some of her TV show and I saw on one of my last videos, there was a lot of people who were like, oh, you know, it seems as though you just don't like Tia and this and that. I wanted to show you guys how Tia's devout ride or die fans, women who were dragging Corey through, through the mud, dragging him for filth after the divorce, you know, on the side, Team Tia have now changed their tune since her TV show came out. It's not easy going through a divorce. I got tired of people thinking that everything was perfect when it wasn't. Tia, you shouldn't have to act in your life. Yeah, and I think I lost me. So y'all can see it is not about likability. Okay, this is just about reality and people seeing what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press play and then I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts, my feelings, my opinions on this entire thing. Let me tell you something. Watching the Tia Mari show, I would never date Tia Mari. I would never go into a relationship with Tia Mari. Not only is she a red flag, she's inexperienced as f You know I've never dated. That's right. I I've haven't. never dated. Corey <laughs> was my first. Right. Yes. Everything. I know. She's immature in certain ways. We be on her side and we don't even be thinking about what Corey went through. After this, watching this show, I feel bad for Corey. She's overwhelming. How do you get over one? Yeah, get, get under, under somebody else. Else. You never heard of mm -hmm. yes, Really? You no. Listen, I had someone all my life. And now we're here. And I hope she don't get in the next season just because of the strength that every episode got me tight. Y'all need to see how this lady is moving. So L let me dial that back. Okay. Let me before we get into the next one, let me just let me just stay right here for a second. Okay. This this woman is so upset, right? Like she's enraged because she's like, we were all on Tia's side. We were so upset at Corey. Now this woman is saying, after seeing the foolishness that Tia Maori has been keeping up. She now feel bad for Corey. Okay, she want to call whatever, you know, We TV and have uh, Corey get a TV show because she's so tired. She said, I can't take it. And this is something that I have, you know, constantly been saying. You know, I said it from the beginning when the TV show was announced. I'm like, uh-uh, y'all. She's going to be singing the same divorce tune. You know, she's dragging this thing on and on because, again, she has unfinished business. I hate when this stuff happens because it makes me feel like I've made a mistake. Because she has not moved on. <sighs> the only person that I ever loved in my life was my ex. Because she's unable to move on. I don't want to be alone, you know. So when I'm going through these challenges, sometimes you want to go back. And then even, you know, something that this woman said when she was like, you know, she's very inexperienced, which Tia has been very open about the fact that she is extremely inexperienced being that Corey's the only person that she's ever actually been with period and you know in a long-term relationship and all the all the above i wasn't even allowed to date until i was 18 years old i met Corey when i turned 20 and i lost my virginity at 25 there was that it <laughs> and then we got married boom well <laughs> and it shows it does show and i think that you know if the tv show was kind of geared towards just her life and just navigating life and working in her new normal. That's one thing. But the center is the divorce, her feelings, her emotions, the divorce. It's a little triggering, if I'm being honest, because I would go to Vegas a lot with Corey just for weekend getaways. So I think I'm afraid of things just rehashing and coming up for me. And people are like, girl, you was over here dancing, acting like you happy, you know, trying to trick the sisterhood. And we see right through you. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm in my hoe phase right now. 
So, I've been watching Tia Mori's new show, right? And I love Tia and Tamara. I love them. I love them on Sister Sister. I just love them. I love them. You know, I grew up with them. But Tia's new show... And this is in no way, shape, or form to bash her or... This is just my opinion. I still have so much love and respect for her and everything that she's going through. But I don't know why the show feels... Is the word inauthentic? The show feels so inauthentic to me. I don't know. I feel like she's just trying way too hard. Want to say, have I ever? If you have, you drink. You drink. Never have I ever gone skinny dipping. <laughs> okay. Really? Never have I ever kissed a girl. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, who you was kissing? I, I don't know. It's just me. I don't know what it is. The show is just not clicking for me at all. Like, I've watched other people's shows and I'm like, oh yeah, I can't wait for the next episode, next episode. And I've been watching the show, but it's just not like, I don't know. I think that we, one thing that we need to take, pay attention is how baffled this woman is. Okay, she's trying to read between the lines. I don't know if she's watching the show now, but she is trying to find out like, what happened? What is it with me that I am not aligned or I can't, I can't do this with her? Like, she got this woman so caught up and confused in her own head. Like, she can't even figure out what it is, but she's like, I just can't do it. And keep in mind that this woman is somebody who said, she said is like a hard, like Tia and Tamara, gung-ho, hard, ride or die fan. This is not somebody who is against the narrative and like, oh, yeah, Tia. she has nothing bad to say. Only thing she's saying is this feels fake. This feels forced. It feels inauthentic. And I can't get with it. <laughs> and I'm a huge fan of hers. What is the problem? I can tell you what the problem is, in my opinion. In my opinion, the problem is. She is not healed. It just feels weird. And it sucks. I don't know. I hate crying. It's just, I feel sad. So I just want to tell you guys that it's okay to feel sad. It's normal to feel sad. The problem is she's trying to face the funk and act like everything is okay and it's not okay. The problem is, is that she is trying to walk around like she got it going on and she made the right decision, but she actually is still in insecure in the decision and everybody is... Feeling that, you know, the inauthenticity, in my personal opinion, is her trying to pretend she's happy or she's in a space that she's actually not in yet. But she's trying to force herself to be in that again because the sisterhood's relying her to stand ten toes down on the decision that she made. I don't know what it is. Am I the only one that feels that way? That this show is just like, I don't like it's not necessary. I don't know. And oh my gosh. Her laughter. When she laughs. And she cackles. That drives me crazy. <laughs> it really, really does. Because I'm like, it's really not that serious. It's not that funny. But she like lets out this screeching loud cackling laugh at every single thing and it's just like girl it just feels like she's trying too hard <sighs> I don't know I don't know if this show was the best thing for her I don't know um I gotta say something though I mean I can't I can't talk too much about the laugh because listen when I laugh and something is really funny my laugh is out of this world okay I'm gonna be honest with you and I do think like when it comes to people's joy and laughter, it's like, you know, that's that's the sound of ultimate joy for a person is when they're laughing. So I don't want to say nothing about that. But what I do want to say, and again, I can't talk because my laugh. <laughs> but I do want to say is that a lot of people who are forcing the laugh, you know, we saw Erica Mena do that on the um, the interview with Cam Newton and she forced the laugh.
But that's that's just the whole premise of that. Get the... <laughs> you trying to get the joke. <laughs> you with the joke. Tia is laughing and she's forced in the laugh. You know, it's literally hiding the pain. It's, you know, such intense emotion is coming out because she really want to cry. Okay, she's, she's heartbroken. She might feel like she's a wreck and she's trying to evoke the laugh and prove how happy she is, but she's hurting. That's why it feels forced. Also, am I the only one that thought that that comment she made about her cousin was weird AF? Um, when I don't know if anybody mentioned it, I think somebody did mention it on app already, like because she said that how Jerome, which is her cousin, is like her anchor, like her best friend, you know, and stuff like that. And then she's like, Yeah, girl, Jerome seen me naked. Hey, Jerome has always been my protector, like he's your safety net. He is, I say, he's like my anchor, he knows me so well. Yeah, Jerome has seen me naked. Uh, <laughs> He's a man, and he's your cousin. What you mean he's seen you naked? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I was just, you know, thinking too much into it. Is that normal? Like, y'all male cousins seen y'all um, naked before? I don't know. How we feeling about Tia Maury's new show, y'all? How we feeling? Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of, of boy cousins, and we are close. I mean, like, I don't even call them cousins. They're my brothers at this point, but... Yeah. I thought, I thought it was a little strange too. Um, and I think it's just like, she is just doing her own thing. You know, Tamara, Tamara said it when somebody asked Tamara if she was going to be on the show and she's like, well, T didn't ask me. So I'll take that as a no. Any chance we'll see you on there? Uh, she didn't ask me. So I take that I'm as, shocked. no, no. She's like, this is my story. Right. And you know, I can only respect that. You know, the thing is, is that Tia is beating to her own drum, trying to find herself, trying to find her way. And the problem is, is that I feel like a lot of this, the stuff that's being revealed in the show, she needed some counsel. Doesn't want any of our input right now. Like, I feel like there should have been somebody that she went to to say, you think we should put that in there? You think we should take that out? You think that's too much? Like, she should have had somebody to counsel her and say, you know, no, girl, that's going to make you look this way. Instead of, you know, a lot of women try to create this thing of like, I'm so free. I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care what anybody feels like I'm just doing me. And like, yeah, but there's like levels to that. Like you can be free, authentic and truthful. But then like, there's also like, you can pull, draw some things in. Like there was nowhere in shape or form that anybody needed to know that information about her and her cousin's relationship or her cousin, you know, her male cousin seeing her naked. That was not necessary in the conversation at all. And she just threw that in there. And again, Having people around you who are not yes people will say, yes, we want you to be authentic, but that can come across a certain way, and we don't need that. I'm one of Tia Mari's biggest advocates, but after watching her show, I thought to myself, maybe I shouldn't judge a couple quickly like that, like I did. I immediately thought Corey was that. I immediately thought he was the problem. Immediately. I knew, I was like, yeah, it gotta be him. Cause you see how he was in that interview? You don't know. You don't know if it's real. You know, at least I know Tia got my back, you know, to the grave. So I mm -hmm. know she's with me and she knows I'm with her. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, everything's not perfect. You know, marriage is work. And that's- Marriage is work, but is. I'm not here. Go ahead, sorry. I'm not gonna- You see how he was in that interview? But after watching the show, I was like, oh my God, she may be just a little overwhelming, right? Like maybe he just gotta, you know, take a stand for herself. Cause child, yeah, I mean, I have no words. I have no more words. This woman said the word, uh, let me go back, okay, before we jump, because I'm telling you, all these people who that you see in this video are Tia supporters. I just want to let you guys know that. This is not a group of people who don't like Tia or who, who have had negative things to say about Tia. This is not a group of people on TikTok. These are all random people who don't know each other. And you know, they all had let it be known that they were all on Tia's side, you know, championing for her after the breakup happened. So it's not like they were in cahoots because they can't stand her. That's not the case at all. This woman is saying, you know, she's unbearable. And what did the first person say? They would never date her. It's too much. They feel overwhelmed. That's a, that speaks volumes.
And again, this is what happens when there's yes people around you supporting. Yeah, girl, do your own thing. Have your own show. Yeah, you, you, uh, you know, show the world what it's like. Yeah, be the be the poster child. Thing on the list you said you didn't do. All the never have you ever's. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be checking all the things off the list. I think a girls trip would be fun. See, has no idea that we're actually going to a strip club and not a magic show. So for now, this will just be our little surprise, and I'm sure she'll thank us later. People are looking at her like, okay, we were we were completely on her side. When we didn't know all these intricate details. Now that we see all these intricate details, we're like, hold up. Uh, maybe we need to go back. Look, is Corey okay? <laughs> what was he going through? What was he enduring while he was still willing to be married to this woman, you know, for the rest of their life? But what was he going through at that time? Because this is too much. And we're just the viewers. So you all were right about the Tia and Tamara situation, at least a lot of you. It's according to Iris. And a lot of you either supported my Tia and Tamara take or were really big mad. Sorry, not sorry. It's how I felt. Um, but you were right. She is now backtracking that statement, basically saying that, no, she was insinuating that I feel when we grow up, we start our own families and our children and we begin to take on new roles and responsibilities in our lives. And that's what it was about. And in these transitions, sometimes you just want to hug and be have someone accessible. But that's not what you said. What you said was, it's times like this, I want to pick up the phone and call my sister. It's times like this when I feel and wish that my sister and I were still close and I could, you know, pick up the phone and call her. But that's just not where we are right now. So you all were right. This was a grab for attention. And I will admit when I am wrong, but I still don't buy it because the idea of not being able to call your sister if something major has happened in your life would tell me that something's wrong because I don't know about you, but my twin or any of my sisters or even my friends, if they're in a time of need, I am absolutely only a phone call away. So what do you all think about her new statement? Do you believe that this was for the show? Do you believe that it was, I personally thought it was none of our business and I didn't understand it being mentioned, but y'all are right. Hey, we're talking about her. It's the video is doing numbers. So if we're talking about it, of course, other people. So that probably calls people to tune in. Let me know what you think in the comments. No, I think that her and Tamara really aren't cool. Okay. I really, I really personally think that her and Tamara actually are not cool. And I think that the reason why they are not as cool, and it's your sister. That doesn't mean that Tamara doesn't love her sister. That's her. They shared a womb. Like, of course, they're going to love each other and be there at the, you know, if anyone, you know, desperately needs something. But I think that Tia's choices have kind of exiled, exiled her away from, um, you know, that kind of structure with her sister. And they're two different people, right? T Tamara is modest and more, you know, refined and, and, and she has a family, she has a husband, you know, and Tia is now out there, um, you know, having strippers dance on her, like, they're in two very different sectors, um, and so I do believe that. But again, somebody's a supporter or whatever now saying like, okay, Tia was saying this, now she's backtracking, so now we don't know how authentic she is. Now, I, I'm a fan of Tia's, but I'm about to hit y'all with something that y'all don't want to hear, and I don't give a shit. Tia don't need a show. She need a therapist. I, I said it. I said it. Every other mother word she crying. And is this unfiltered? Is this real? What? You holding back on stuff that we want to know. Why you don't talk to your sister? I saw you trying to say because y'all live in two different, uh, y'all live in two different spaces. She's married. She, listen, my sister just turned 40. My other little sister, 26. We all live 40 minutes from each other. We be on the phone all mother day. Something happened tragic in my mother like I'm calling my sister. That's what we got FaceTime. Tia, you got an iPhone. I saw it. I saw okay, listen, I'm sorry. I'm trying to hold back my laugh, but the fact that she is yelling is taking me out right now. <laughs> like the fact that she has this much disdain for somebody again and she's a supporter of is just so funny. I see it with my eyes. Every time, every other word this lady says, she crying. It's not easy going through a divorce. I got tired of people thinking that everything was perfect when it wasn't. Tia, you shouldn't have to act in your life. Yeah, and I think I lost me. She want a man back. She want a man back. She keep worrying about what the image is, what her did. She's still protecting her image too. 
I thought you want us to watch this show because you sitting up here telling us the truth about what's going on. Her son don't want to be recorded. Okay, teacher's on here, kid. She crying when she leave. They've been divorced for a year. What are you still crying about? And I get it. I ain't never been married. And I didn't cry many a nights about my... I didn't cry. I didn't cry more than Mary J. Blige. More than her. I get it. But Tia, come on. She got to get back. Come on. She, they should have put camera crew in her house. They should have put emergency help crew in her house. All she do is because she want her fucking man back. And I'm blaming father than a motherfucker. <laughs> but, see, you see, and this is this is something that's so funny to me. Um, She said so much stuff so far. But what's so funny to me is that I said this before, that there were so many people who were on Tia's side. But then when Corey went to the streets... They were like, oh, hold up. <laughs> Corey. Like, Corey in the house. Okay, I'm so glad that they over there. Yeah, girl, be a strong, independent woman. You don't need him. Don't go back to him. They telling her that in the comments and they in his DM. Look at him. He ain't never look better. Be so for real. That man is <laughs> I don't think I ever look twice at Corey Harvey. I'm going to keep it real with you. He always look like Tia Husband. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> This is why trying to appease the sisterhood or people outside of your inner family unit, don't, it, it's foolish to me. It's foolish. Listening to your homegirls when you have a husband and it's, it's a you know, contrary system where you're trying to figure, they don't care. He will lay his life on the line for you. You care about these other people who don't care nothing about you? When this stuff happens because it makes me feel like I've made a mistake. A mistake of what? Let We have to be honest. That's, that don't make sense. It is, it, how is it that so many people, so many different people are all saying the same thing? Everybody ain't crazy. People can see through it. They can see. And the fact that she was saying like, oh, you know, she doesn't need a show. She needs to talk to somebody. I think she does, you know, go to therapy or whatever the case is. But like these moments of this vulnerability, again, she's putting it out there, but it's showcasing your inner thoughts. Do you really want to go home? You know how you say, go home, Roger? Go home, Tia. It's okay. It's okay that you went out there and you thought that that was the right decision and then you realized that you actually um, made a mistake. It's okay. It's okay. I don't know, you know, you being on the, uh, the, the campaign of, like, you know, uh, negative things and throwing him under the bus, that might be another conversation, but it's okay that that's the truth. I don't know. Maybe there's truth to the fact that she did try to go home and he wasn't with it. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. The truth of the matter is, this woman is hurt. What he do to her? See, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. She ain't tell us what happened. I watched an hour and like 20 minutes of that shit. She ain't tell me nothing but cry. She got a bunch of 20-year-olds working for her telling her, Zess, yeah, and let's do... Girl... Tia got drawers older than you. Why are you working for her? Thing on the list you said you didn't do, all the never have you ever's. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be checking all the things off the list. Girl, I, I what? I try, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to not judge people and get them the benefit of the doubt. But this woman want her man be. She want her man be, but she trying to stay in her fucking business. Tia, I've been there. I've been there. I wanted my man back, and I stood on business, and then I went back. I ain't give a fuck about what a motherfucker told me. They ain't holding you at night, Tia. Pleasing you. Kissing you. Go get your man and your kids back, Tia. That's all I got to say. Every other word, she crying. She's supposed to be telling us the truth about her and her sister. Uh, we passed her and her sister because we ain't going to know that. She's still worried about this image. Girl. Sister, sister. Never knew i try to be with ya. Girl, go get your man back. Sister, get your man back. I'm going to hook you all up. Not mine. You see, the people who are on her side and singing her tune, oh, something must be wrong with Corey and all this kind of stuff, that, you know, when they're in your DM and they're supporting you and, you know, they're telling you, oh, yes, you know, you are the symbol of strength and resilience and all of these things. You know, I'm all about inspiring and encouraging. Um, and, I mean, the DMs that I've gotten from so many women that are going through the same thing and just saying how... They admire my courage and my strength. It's like when they're on that page with you, it's one thing. But you see, the more intricate details that they're finding out the situation, they're like, hold up, girl. I don't know. 
I don't know about this. I don't know if, you know, we genuinely uh, can stand with you and agree with all the things that you're saying because at the end of the day, you seem a little bit like you were a part of the problem and we blindly assumed that it wasn't you. We blindly took your side, you know, saying, yes, our good sis that we've known, you know, from TV and all this kind of stuff, we, we blindly supported you and now it seems like you were just a little bit all over the place. OK, it seems like you there was a lot of different reasons, but you had a part to play in this situation. And again, you know, all these women who are, you know, genuinely seeing the situation for what it is and seeing it, you know, throughout and are watching how she's maneuvering after the breakup um, compared to how he's maneuvering the break out, um, you know, after the breakup. They're like, hold up, girl. The advice to keep it grounded and not lose yourself in a relationship. Um, be still and, and keep God first. And just be silent. And the noise, the noise disappears. You know what I'm saying? That's all I do. I'll be still. And I think about the big picture. And I keep the main thing, the main thing, which is my children, God first, you know, and um, my career. And just move in peace and love. I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't. It, it seems like there's way more to the story. And maybe we need to have Corey on the show. And the two of y'all need to sit down and talk. Maybe that's what needs to happen. I don't know if it happened. I don't know if they rap filming. But maybe that's what the people needed. Maybe instead of the crying and stuff like that, maybe the first episode should have been her and Corey talking about what really happened. That's what would genuinely help people to see, okay, what, what the situation was, whatever the case is, why you came to the decision, whatever. But while we keep peeling these layers off, you talk about that's the only person you've ever been with. Um, you talk about, oh, you know, you felt alone in the house. Then you turn around and, and Jack A. Harry put all your business out in the street talking about, oh, because he wasn't making the same amount of money as you. You're dropping all these tidbits. But again, it's not adding up because every time people see you, you're literally sobbing. It's not even like she's like shedding a couple tears. You're like, oh, guys, I'm a little emotional. Like you're sobbing. You want to go back home. You do. But again, you can't go back home because of what it would look like. Hey, girl, your shoe. <laughs> Them legs were up in the air. Oh, and she wasn't, she was with it. Who is she? <laughs> like, tier 2.0. Or what people would think or what it would feel like or if that would mean that the evolution or the growth that you say that you're going through, it would, you know, change or pivot because of that. Because, you know, you're, you were in a marriage, you leave the marriage, now you're out here trying to find somebody else, and you're not happy with anybody that you go on dates with. The people who are in proximity with you who are taking you on dates are not up to your standards. Oh, he had a grill. Oh, I can't believe he did this. Oh, I can't believe he did that. Like, it's always a problem. In my opinion, it's always a problem because it's not Corey. It's not what you're used to. That's my opinion. I'd like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on this video and on, you know, what all these women had to say. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you.